So, when the structure of electrons of the atom was established, and we knew that electrons were spinning around the outside, at least that was the theory. There was some sort of Newtonian planetary model where effectively the protons, the positive charge on the protons, held the electrons effectively via a simple harmonic uh, force, centripetal acceleration, constantly holding them in the same way a satellite would orbit around a planet. However, this rather simplistic model, which um, implied that electrons existed only as particles, was based, was fundamentally flawed by the question, if positive charges attract negative charges, and we know they do, opposites attract, why don't electrons crash into the nucleus? So why is it, like for example we see as satellites orbit the Earth, eventually slowing down and having lower and lower orbits until eventually losing uh, their orbital stability and crashing into the ocean. Why do you not see electrons crashing in to the proton-rich nucleus? And this was a problem. So let's have a look. We've got here in the case of 35Cl and 37Cl, the same number of electrons and the same number of protons. We've got here, though, in the case of each of our isotopes, a different number of neutrons, 18, 19, and 20. So, as I talked about in the previous slide, if we have a positively charged nucleus, why isn't the negative charge of the electron result in the electron itself moving towards the nucleus itself? What stops the electrons from crashing into the nucleus? And this is the basis of, of quantum mechanics, the understanding that energy exists in small, discrete packets. And it was the Danish physicist Niels Bohr who came up with a solution uh, to this issue uh, of electrons not actually ending up uh, in uh, 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 crashing into the nucleus in the early 20th century. And he put forward a couple of ideals. The amount of energy which an electron has determines how far away it is from the nucleus. So in other words, the more energy it has, the further away it is from the grasp of the positive charge. He also suggested that electrons could only be at certain specific distances from the nucleus. And whereas my analogy uh, earlier of a satellite orbiting uh, around a planet means that it could technically exist at a number of different altitudes away from the Earth, in this particular case, we're saying that quantized energy means that they can only exist, uh, electrons can only exist at certain discrete distances away uh, from the nucleus of an atom. So, to use uh, an analogy here of electrons and quantization of energy, we'll take the example of a staircase, which is shown on the board. A person, shown on the board, moves from one step to the other but they can only be on one step at a time, and the higher up the staircase they are, the greater the amount of potential energy they have with respect to the ground. This, if you'll recall, is the very basic uh, level of uh, understanding for potential energy is equal to mass times gravity times height. Also, you can only move one step at a time. It is not possible to move more than one step at a time. And that, is, as shown here, means that your movement from 4 to 2 is forbidden. But your movement from 3 to 2 is allowed. So the movement of a person up a single step or down a single step is permitted, but more than that is not. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions customized to US MLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.